Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do first today is to review material that we talked about probably in the second week, certainly by the third week of our course, the notion of recurrence equations. Now, <clears throat> here I'm, I'm going to try to stick with a notation that we're going to have a function of the integer n. So r of n is the number of regions determined by n lines that intersect in general position. If you have only one line, it separates the plane into one half and the other half. So r of 1 is 2. And then we develop the recurrence rn plus 1 equals rn plus n plus 1 when n is greater or equal to 0. Okay. Sn is the number of regions determined by n circles that intersect in general position. And this is very similar to the preceding one, except the, the n plus 1 in the first one has become 2n in this one. Okay, so I'm, you know, the full derivation of these equations we did a long time ago. I'm just trying to refresh your memory as to the kinds of, of equations that you get. So in particular, in this example, if you wanted to compute S100, could you do it? Well, you could probably do it by hand in an hour. Because you, you just have to crank through 100 calculations. Yeah, you can do that in an hour. Okay, so you can get S of n for any value of n, and a computer, of course, could do this much faster. So it's these formulas are very useful from a computational standpoint. But what they don't allow you to do is to talk about the quality of the solution. What's its general behavior? Is this polynomial? Is this exponential, double exponential? Uh, you don't know, uh, at least not, not instantly from the recurrence. Uh, here's a one that we did. This is the uh, tiling of a 2 by n rectangle using dominoes, so 1 by 2s and 2 by 1s. And we got this recurrence. We, we called it at the time the, the Fibonacci recurrence. OK. Again, this, this equation at the bottom allows you to compute t of n for any value of n that you want. But it doesn't tell you about the quality of the solution. Now let me back up. Is that polynomial, quadratic, cubic, quartic? Is it exponential? How does this grow with n? Let me go forward. Is that quadratic, cubic, quartic, polynomial, exponential? How does it grow within? We know they both grow within. And while we're computing them, we just don't understand the general behavior. It's not obvious. It shouldn't. You know, it, eventually, it will become more obvious. But right now, it's not obvious to you. I, I hope, I expect, that you can say much about the quality of these solutions. How do they grow? OK. Then let me close with this fourth example where I don't have a picture, but this is the kind of thing we did where the number of ternary sequences that do not contain 0, 1 in consecutive positions, uh, u1 is 3, they're all good, uh, u2 is 8, there's one of the 9 which is bad, and then we got the recurrence, un plus 2 is 3, un plus 1 minus un. Because remember, it was three things, but you overcounted and you have to take off the Overcounting. OK, so let's write these in one common form. And I've chosen the letters. I, I, if you look back on the slides, you'll see I've, I've used R, S, T, and U just to differentiate between the four. Now, if you write them in a common form where you write all the function terms on one side, like R of n, R of n plus 1, et cetera, and then write on the right-hand side everything which doesn't involve the sequence. So the first one looks like r of n plus 1 minus r of n equals n plus 1, et cetera, et cetera. 